Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example is going to be a circuit with a capacitor in it. So we have now, again, we're going to have a constant voltage, not a, a time varying voltage, a resistor, a capacitor, and a switch closing at t equals zero. We're going to solve the differential equation again, but first we have to find the differential equation by assuming that when we go around the circuit, we sum up all the voltages, they will add up to zero. When we go across the battery we've come from the negative to the positive end, we have a voltage rise, which is equal to E, minus the voltage drop across the resistor, which is minus I times R, and minus the voltage across the capacitor, which is minus Q divided by C, and that will all add up to zero. Remember that Q can be found by saying that I is equal to the dQ dt, which means that dQ is equal to I times dt, which means that if we integrate both sides, we get Q is equal to the integral of I times dt. So since we want an equation as a function of I, we can replace Q by the integral of I dt, and so we get I minus I times R minus the integral of I dt divided by the, chart, the size of the capacitor is equal to zero. Well, I want something in the general form where we have I prime plus some function of time times I is equal to some other function of time. Well, to do that, we can go ahead and take the derivative with respect to time of every term in the equation. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of the equation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, okay, the ddt of the left side is equal to the ddt, the ddt, the derivative with respect to time of the right side. And of course, the right side is zero. That makes it easy. So when we do that, since e is not changing with respect to time, this is going to be zero minus i prime times r minus i over c, because when we take the derivative of an integral, we simply get what's inside the integral, and that will be equal to zero. Simplifying that by dividing both sides by r, and I uh, should say, yeah, dividing both sides by r, and multiplying both sides by negative one, I will get i prime plus r, whoop, no, plus one over rc times i is equal to zero. And so now you see that we do have the first order linear differential equation. It's also homogeneous. Hmm, that makes it easy. To find the solution for this, we're just going to have to use the separation of variables technique. That would be the easiest way to do that. So let's rewrite this as di dt. So we have di dt plus 1 over rc times i is equal to 0. Moving this to the other side, we get di dt is equal to minus 1 over rc times i. Then moving the dt over here and the i down here, we have di over i is equal to minus 1 over rc times dt. And now we can go ahead and integrate both sides of the equation. So we integrate the left side, we integrate the right side. To do that, we get the natural log of i is equal to minus 1 over rc times time plus a constant of integration. Okay, then to simplify this equation, the solution, we're going to take the antilog of both sides. So we get E raised to the natural log of I is equal to E raised to the minus 1 over RC times T plus a constant of integration. Let's call that constant integration C1. Let's call it C1. On the left side, of course, the natural log negates the exponential, so we get i as a function of time is equal to, here we can take e to the c1, call it a constant, so we call it c times e to the minus 1 over rc times time. And then we need to find out what c is equal to. All right, so here we use initial conditions at when time is equal to zero, i would be equal to, well, it would be equal to the voltage divided by the resistance using Ohm's law because current will begin to flow immediately. There's no charge on the capacitor when we first close the switch. That means we have full current in the circuit. It'll be E divided by R when time is equal to zero. So plugging that in there into the equation, so we're using this equation right here. We plug in zero for T 
and I will be equal to E divided by R. So E divided by R is equal to C E to the zero power, and of course E to the zero power is one, which means that C is equal to E divided by R. So using our initial condition, we know what our constant is equal to, we plug that in here, and we can say that the current as a function of time is equal to E divided by R, times e to the minus 1 over rc times time, and that will then be the solution to the differential equation, which is indeed, uh, uh, the, which is indeed the equation that describes the, the current inside the circuit. If we're going to graph that equation, it's going to look like this. We have current as a function of time. We have time on the horizontal axis. Initially, we have an E over R amount of current when time is equal to zero, and then it will exponentially decay like this over time when it goes to zero as time becomes very large. So that is the solution to this particular differential equation, and that's how we solve circuits in analysis like that.